In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good afternoon to you. All very welcome, uh, those of you joining us here present, also those joining us on television and on, on, on social media. We thank you for joining us and welcome you to this Mass coming from Our Lady Queen of Ireland Basilica here at Knox Shrine. Mass is being offered for Tommy Joe Byrne of Clunterreth Anniversary Mass today. So we welcome the family here today for the Anniversary Mass. When we come, when we Catholics come to celebrate the Eucharist, uh, there are different things we do. First of all, we begin with repentance. We repent, then we listen to God's word, then we offer sacrifice to God, body and blood of his son, and then we receive Jesus in Holy Communion, and then we are sent out to live the Mass in our lives throughout the week. So for us Catholics, the Mass is at the very center of our spirituality. It's at the very core of being a Catholic. And we begin then by repentance. Uh, we ask God to forgive us our sins, knowing that God loves to forgive us. All he asks is that we repent. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the paschal mystery within us that those you are, you are pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. First reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul got to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him. They could not believe he was really a disciple. Barnabas, however, took charge of him, introduced him to the apostles, and explained how the Lord had appeared to Saul and spoken to him on his journey, and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. Saul now started to go around with them in Jerusalem, preaching fiercely in the name of the Lord. But after he had spoken to the Hellenists and argued with them, they were determined to kill him. When the brothers knew, they took him to Caesarea and sent him off from there to Tarsus. The churches throughout Judea, Galilee and Samaria were now left in peace, building themselves up, living in the fear of the Lord and filled with the consolation of the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. i 
Second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, our love is not just words or mere talk, but something real and active. Only by this can we be certain that we are the children of the truth and be able to quieten our conscience in his presence, whatever accusations it may raise against us. Because God is greater than our conscience and he knows everything. My dear people, if we cannot be condemned by our own conscience, we need not be afraid in God's presence. And whatever we ask him, we shall receive, because we keep his commandments and live the kind of life he wants. His commandments are these, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and that we love one another, as he told us to. Whoever keeps his commandments lives in God, and God lives in him. We know that he lives in us by the spirit that he has given us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that bears no fruit he cuts away and every branch that does bear fruit he prunes to make it bear even more. You are pruned already by means of the word that I have spoken to you. Make your home in me as I make mine in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit all by itself, but must remain part of the vine, neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me, with me in him, bears fruit in plenty. For cut off from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is like a branch that has been thrown away, he withers. These branches are collected and thrown on the fire and they are burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask what you will and you shall get it. It is to the glory of my Father that you should bear much fruit 
and then you will be my disciples. And this is the gospel of the Lord. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me, with me, in him bears fruit in plenty. For cut off from me, you can do nothing. Clearly, the fruitfulness of our lives depends on how well uh, grafted we are to Jesus, on how connected we are to him. In other words, it depends on our relationship with Jesus. We, we are made for relationships. We are not meant to be alone. We are meant to live in community and we need each other. Life is much more about relationships than about power or money or success. God himself is all about relationships. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity. And when Jesus was asked about the most important commandment, he talked about our relationship with God and with one another. Love God and love your neighbor. Now, love requires that we carry one another's burdens and look after one another. Some people have very heavy burdens to carry. Marriage breakdown, family stresses and strains, addiction in the family, suicide, grief, family members giving up the practice of the faith, cancer, the list goes on. But the secret to a life of love and charity and good relationships is to always treat others as you would like them to treat you. Our attitude, our attitude to others and our behavior towards our neighbor define who we are, not our intelligence or our qualifications. A simple rule in life is, if you would not like it done to you, don't do it to others. Now, one of the most beautiful things we can do in this life is to care for and to help one another. No one really knows how much anyone else is hurting. You have no idea of the pain and the worries and anxiety that some people carry with them every single day. You could be standing right next to someone who's falling apart and you mightn't even notice it. That's why we should always try to be supportive and helpful. How we treat people really ultimately tells all. And our, as Christians, our job in life is to give a helping hand to someone in need, to lift up the fallen, to restore the broken, to heal the hurting and the wounded, and to try to understand the difficult one. Always help someone in trouble. You may be the only one who does. And so many people are hanging on by the tiniest of threads. Treat people then with kindness, and you may be that thread. So to love one another and to charity, Jesus didn't mean just to love those who fit into our idea of lovable. He meant those who are broken, those who are scarred, those who no one else will touch. Jesus meant to love them. So we cannot pick and choose. To love the asylum seeker, the refugee, the homeless, it can be tough and challenging. Love can be very demanding. But once we are grafted onto Jesus the vine, then we will receive all the grace we need to help those in need. But as, as I say, ultimately, it's all about helping taking care of and supporting one another. Some years ago, 
at the Special Olympics, there was, a, there was a race for Down syndrome men, and eight Down syndrome men lined up at the starting point. And when they were given the signal, all eight took off together, but one of them stumbled and fell to the ground, and he started screaming. And the others looked back, and when they saw what happened, they went back, and they picked him up and comforted him. So they decided then that they would carry him to the final tip. So what happened is all eight decided that they would hold hands. And all eight ran together, reaching the final tip together. And all deservedly received Olympic gold. And now let us profess our faith in God with, our, with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. So let us pray. We read in our gospel today, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask what you will and you shall get it. So with confidence in God's goodness, we now ask him in our petitions. Pray for Pope Francis. Ask the Lord to give him the health and energy he needs for his ministry. Lord, hear us. Pray that the power of the Most High may overshadow the people of Gaza, Ukraine, uh, and all the other troubled parts of the world and bring about an end to the wars. Lord, hear us. For those who are struggling to make ends meet, that they may find assistance in their time of need, Lord, hear us. For those who are sick at home or in hospital, that they may receive the healing touch of the Lord, Lord, hear us. We pray for Christians across the world who are being persecuted about at the moment, 100,000 Christians murdered every year. May the Lord give them strong faith and courage at this time. Lord, hear us. Pray for a moment now for your own intentions and for the intention for which you want to offer this Mass today. Lord, hear us. Through Mary's intercession, we pray, remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thine intercession was left unaided. Spark with this confidence, we fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To thee do we come, before thee we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Lord incarnate, despise not our petition, graciously hear and answer us. Amen. So let us pray for healing. Lord, fill us with the healing power of your Holy Spirit. Cast out any sickness, infection, or pain, and mend what is broken. Heal us also of mental stress and strain, bad memories of the past, depression, fear, addiction. Lord Jesus, give us a mind that is free from distress, a mind that is peaceful, relaxed, and calm. Restore us to full health in mind and body so that we may serve you for the rest of our lives. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we'll now have our offer to collection. We thank you very sincerely for your generosity to Knox Shrine.
And pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself to be the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We Catholics believe that at the consecration, the bread and wine is changed into the body and blood of Jesus. So present now on the altar is the body and blood of Jesus. What happens now is Jesus offers himself to the Father and takes our offering with him. And then each one of us, we offer to God our Father the body and the blood of Jesus, which of course is the greatest gift and the greatest sacrifice any human being can offer to God. It's why the Mass is so important. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together, Francis our Pope, Francis our Bishop, all the clergy and all your people. Remember your servant, Tommy Joe Byrne, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them in to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. That Savior's command, affirmed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, especially the evil of war. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, anxiety, and useless worry as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. So for a moment or two in silence, now let us pray for an end to the war in Gaza and in the Ukraine. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Love of God, you take away the sins of the world. Love mercy on us. Love of God, you take away the sins of the world. Love mercy on us. Love of God, you take away. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. So for those of you joining us uh, online, it's an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this time receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as you're already there, unite myself holy to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. And if there are any celiacs present, we do have uh, celiac hosts uh, available.
Sacrament most holy, or sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Our Lady of Knock, Saint Joseph, Saint John the Evangelist. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. So if anybody would like medals or religious objects, blessed, I bless them now. Heavenly Father, bless these medals and religious objects. May the saving presence of Christ be in the hearts of those who use them and the homes in which they are placed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And just before the final blessing, a short reflection, only about a minute or so, on serenity and peace of mind. Live a life of serenity, not a life of regrets. Have a peaceful mind. Do everything quietly and in a calm spirit. Never let your cares or worries disturb your peace of mind. Be satisfied with what you have. Be content. Be grateful. Count your blessings, not your troubles. Serenity and peace of mind is being calm, relaxed, and untroubled. It arises from trust in God. That's the secret to trust God. Be at peace with God. Be at peace with your neighbor. And be at peace with yourself. The Lord be with you. I pray that God may visit your home and family. May he knock early, stay late, protect you and your family from sickness and from evil and bring you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, go, mass is ended, go in peace. Sends us for